Hello and welcome back to this uh, lecture on Mulkraj Anand's The Price of Bananas. Uh, the thematic uh, interpretation that I am uh, looking for in this uh, story is related to the idea of catharsis, uh, which I will come to in a short while. Okay, so um, if you recall the previous session, uh, we realized that uh, the set, the businessman, uh, is in utter confusion, and uh, why is he uh, confused and nervous? Uh, the reason is because his embroidered cap has been uh, stolen or snatched away by a monkey at a railway station in uh, Faziabad. So this is the context for um, the crisis uh, that is unraveling at the moment in the story. So, uh, the initial description of the set uh, offered by the first person narrator uh, is um, that of, um, you know, uh, in terms of his physical appearance, he is smug and his face is round. And uh, so, this is the uh, uh, small bit of information about his physical appearance that we get from the uh, first person narrator. Earlier, if you recall, we had a sense of the kind of outfits that he is wearing. He is wearing a very uh, um, delicate muslin uh, cloth, um, a tunic, and 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 he uh, his clothing suggests his um, sophistication in taste and class, and uh, it it indicates uh, the outfit indicates his superior wealth too. So apart from that um, uh, uh, narration uh, or description about his uh, clothing, the other physical details that we get about him uh, refers to his smugness. Um, that is a quality of mine and the round uh, is uh, it suggests uh, both um, the rounded uh, shape of his face and the rounded figure, again uh, perhaps a very uh, fat person and in these two things again are linked to uh, class and complacency and um, wealth. So, um, so we have a very uh, complex and self-satisfied, wealthy person who is suddenly, um, you know, shaken, uh, who is suddenly nervous, and uh, he perspires uh, quite a bit uh, because of this uh, incident that happens to him, uh, and um, a, a monkey is the reason behind that. Okay, so uh, what does he do? Uh, as I mentioned uh, briefly before, uh, his attitude is a rebellious attitude. Uh, he is not, um, you know, in a supplicant's position. Instead, what he does is he threatens the monkey with his fisticuffs and he offers or utters loud abuse to the monkey. And he hopes that uh, these two gestures will help him get what he wants. And um, it is a very, very interesting uh, sort of behavior uh, which uh, suggests that uh, one can um, get one's uh, desire, uh, one can achieve one's ends through force and through uh, abuse. And, and uh, the, the, uh, the tradesman is immediate to offer such reactions perhaps because um, these are his usual uh, customary reactions to any critical situations and and we need to again uh, contrast his reaction towards the monkey uh, which has snatched his um, cap uh, uh, with uh, his reaction to the coolie who um, uh, is about to be kicked at the end of the story when he asks for more money. So, um, his reactions are similar uh, and, and, and that tells us something about uh, Seth's, uh, you know, um, common uh, place reactions to critical situations and, and um, that is something to be uh, noted. So, there is no uh, subtlety it, and, and he does not uh, apply his mind according to uh, the, the quality of the situation, the nature of the situation and, and change his uh, behavior in order to uh, get the desired outcome. So, uh, he believes that through brute force and through imprecations, uh, he can get away with any kind of um, you know, a difficult uh, manner of situations. 
So, uh, I, I want to pick up on this um, attitude of the onlookers, um, an aspect with which I, I finished my previous session and uh, the attitude of the onlookers is very interesting because um, it tells us a lot about uh, uh, the reality of, of um, the India of then and perhaps even today and, and um, it's an interesting attitude that we can explore a little further uh, in the context of the story. And um, this is um, the extract which is uh, interesting in this regard and uh, the Seth who is very angry and abusive uh, uh, towards the monkey is um, you know uh, offers a different kind of um, uh, you know emotion towards the onlookers he says look people he said stretching his hands to the crowd with a piteous and hopeless expression on his bespectacled face so we have um, another physical uh, description of this um, tradesman this businessman he wears glasses um, he wears spectacles spectacles and uh, he thought that the loss of his headdress which is the symbol of dignity in India would be uh, deplored by everyone and a sentiment of solidarity arise and um, he hopes for a solidarity of emotion on the part of the onlookers and um, it's, it's again very uh, significant that um, he tries to uh, get the sympathy of the onlookers. Uh, he ha he has this expression of uh, of um, you know a uh, uh, hopelessness. Uh, he looks piteous, and that's a very stagey uh, um, emotion that he quickly dons in order to uh, get the sympathy of the audience uh, who is witnessing this uh, situation. And um, it's it's a it's an attitude uh, that I suggest is stagey. Uh, probably because um, uh, because we can see that the previous moment he was vociferous in his challenge uh, he was really um, violent in the way he was um, uh, forceful in the way he was threatening uh, challenging the monkey so that he immediately kind of switches gear and uh, and um, offers a very sad expression for the benefit of the audience so his uh, expressions his emotions especially the emotions that um, kind of ask the onlookers to offer sympathy is not something that we can uh, trust um, and that's that's kind of indicated in the story so um, what do the audience do the people just turn their faces away or look stone faced as they often do for fear of being dragged into giving evidence before the police so um, this indifference and, and stone faced uh, uh, expression on the people who are looking at the situation is perhaps the reality uh, of day to day in Indian society where people are afraid of the police, they don't want to get into trouble, they have to face unnecessary, unnecessary uh, process, bureaucratic process in order to help the authorities reach um, justice. So uh, they don't want the hassle, that's one, uh, one um, interpretation. The other interpretation is that um, the onlookers perhaps are sympathetic towards the cause of the monkeys perhaps that's why they are not expressing any kind of sympathy or, or any kind of pity for the situation of this uh, tradesman this wretch uh, tradesman and um, in fact if we um, uh, notice the narration uh, pretty closely we realize that the audience also laughs uh, it also laughs and, and and that laughter can be um, taken as an expression of sympathy towards um, the the monkey and against uh, um, this uh, man Seth because uh, Seth is being mocked at by this uh, you know uh, inc incident uh, which the monkey has caused. So um, on, on, on a comprehensive level uh, we can uh, uh, sort of interpret uh, the attitude of the onlookers as an expression of, of um, solidarity towards the um, ethics that are um, you know, staged in the epics that are brought forth in the epics and, and in the epics um, especially in the context of uh, General Hanuman and his hosts of monkey troops uh, uh, there is this notion that they uh, work towards establishing um, uh, justice on, on this earth and they work towards uh, eliminating 
eliminating the evil so all these attitudes are blended together in the reactions uh, of the audience and um, as I said the reactions are partly um, social realistic and partly uh, you know endorsing uh, the ideological uh, notions which are connected to um, the, eth uh, the epics the spiritual and religious epics of India okay so uh, let's look at um, uh, the narrator's intervention. So, we have this painter uh, artist who is also looking at um, the unfolding situation and uh, he uh, talks to uh, Seth Cooley because this uh, man is standing clueless as to where he is supposed to put down the luggage of the set and um, this uh, tradesman is busy uh, in, 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 in his attempts to get back his embroidered cap. So, uh, the narrator kind of um, uh, steps in and gives directions to the Cooley and in fact, he even helps him uh, put the luggage uh, in the compartment uh, in the first class compartment and and um these uh, actions of the narrator tell us uh, two very interesting things uh, one is that he is not one of the stony faced or unsympathetic onlookers who do not want to intervene who do not want to make any kind of um, uh, any kind of action that would uh, influence the situation in any way so he is intervening so he is proactive in that regard he is not a uh, mere spectator so that's very um, that's a very interesting uh, um, uh, um, aspect of the narrator the other um, significance is uh, the fact that he expresses solidarity with the coolie and uh, that's something um, which is very very important uh, because uh, in the whole um, scene we do not have anyone um, uh, kind of uh, sympathizing with the coolie in a very tangible manner except for this narrator this artist who, uh, who has somehow found a spot for himself in the first class compartment through his professional accomplishments so uh, we have a, a, a sense of solidarity a sense of sympathy expressed here on the part of the narrator towards the coolie and that's something that has to be uh, made a note of so um, while the set is expressing is expressing a, a certain set of emotions he is putting up certain um, you know faces uh, in order to uh, get a certain kind of impact from the audience he looks piteous uh, and, and he is trying to um, get the audience to react to this pathetic situation of his. Um, there is no reaction to that um, uh, effort. Uh, on the other hand, the coolie uh, who does not um, try to get any kind of uh, you know reaction from the audience does get a sentiment of solidarity from the narrator. So, the, um, and, and another thing is that this narrator is not expressing any kind of sympathy or empathy towards the Seth. He is not talking to him, he is not uh, stepping forward, he is not offering any suggestions in, in terms of how to retrieve the cap from the uh, monkey who has taken it up onto a neem tree. So, we need to uh, note that. So, the set does not get any kind of uh, sentiment of solidarity whereas, the coolie gets it. Um, in fact, the co-traveller in the first class compartment uh, who is a set is completely ignored by uh, this narrator unless it is um, the request of the narrator to give somebody some more money. So, that is the uh, kind of um, uh, relation that he has with this tradesman. Okay, so uh, we have an, uh, a, a fruit hawker, a fruit seller who arrives on the scene with a, uh, a fruit cart uh, and he is a minor character and he offers to um, uh, he offers to help the set uh, in rescuing his cap from the uh, monkey and um, it is a very interesting passage which I would like to uh, uh, read it out to you. So, he says um, that the narrator says that as I turned from the compartment I saw that a fruit hawker had come forward 
pushing his little cart and was telling the set that he would rescue his cap. Set G seemed to be only slightly relieved by the voluntary offer of the fruit vendor only slightly relieved um, that's a very interesting uh, phrase and my question is why doesn't the set trust him uh, why is he suspicious of um, the uh, fruit vendor um, perhaps the set doesn't trust the fruit um, uh, seller uh, because a he's suspicious that's his character he's generally suspicious of everybody b uh, he doesn't trust a working class character and um, the other uh, possibility is that um, the set is worried that um, some kind of financial contract or complication might arise out of this uh, offer made by the fruit hawker so that's probably why uh, he is only slightly relieved by that voluntary offer and that's a very uh, important um, uh, important notion that we need to grasp so it's a voluntary offer nobody has asked the fruit hawker to step in and and, and rescue the cap so uh, but the vendor went ahead the fruit vendor went ahead nevertheless dangling a couple of bananas before the monkey with his right hand and stretching out his left hand for the cap. So uh, the fruit vendor forges ahead and uh, he is uh, trying to get the monkey to uh, get the bananas from him and return um, the cap um, as, as a kind of a reward. So uh, the meaning of the deal is pretty clear um, at least to the onlookers uh, and to the monkey that uh, the monkey is supposed to take the bananas and offer the cap. Um, so uh, that's the uh, interpretation there but I'm quite interested in this word nevertheless in this adverb nevertheless um, and that tells us that uh, without getting the permission or the agreement of the set the trader the businessman about this kind of deal uh, the fruit vendor goes ahead so he doesn't get the uh, nod um, the green signal uh, so to speak from the set uh, in terms of this offer that he uh, gives to the monkey so uh, what about the monkey which has the cap and who is uh, on the tree the monkey seems uh, to hesitate uh, in, in, in kind of um, part, uh, partaking uh, uh, of this particular bargain um, and that's the interpretation of the narrator who's looking at the situation so the monkey seems to hesitate he's interpreting the, the motivations of the monkey and, uh, and the narrator says that um, uh, the monkey seemed to hesitate not because he was not tempted but because there were too many people laughing and talking and offering advice and he probably dreaded some punishment if he came down so lots of uh, there's a lot of uh, crowd uh, witnessing the scene and this crowd is noisy and um, and some members of the crowd are at this point offering advice they are, are now offering advice it's very interesting so as the event progresses people are uh, um, seemingly interested and the narrator says that um, the monkey probably uh, fears punishment and and um, that's why it's hesitating to get the bananas uh, and 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 make this trade uh, this trade with the uh, uh, fruit vendor and again this is a human like attitude the fact that the monkey is dreading punishment uh, from uh, from uh, from, uh, from, um, from the crowd for some kind of wrongdoing it has uh, committed so um, again that's a very interesting um, observation or an interpretation that the narrator offers so uh, what does the fruit vendor do he coaxes and coos um, again a uh, very uh, beautiful set of words uh, used uh, to express the behavior of the fruit vendor in trying to convince the monkey into um, offering the uh, 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 the cap in return for the banana so uh, coaxes and coos are words that um, 
used that are used in the connect in connection with uh, especially mothers who tr uh, who try to coax their um, children they, who coo to their children in order to uh, make them behave in a particular way or in order to uh, comfort them or soothe them so this is again a, a, a moment in the story where there is a tenderness a gentleness uh, expressed and if you recall the previous session we had an expression of um, a, a sort of tenderness is hinted um, in, in, in the context of the uh, monkey mothers uh, which are trying to feed uh, um, the young ones and then we have um, the, the narrator himself who's, uh, whose action of helping the coolie is a very, very uh, tender moment in the story, uh, an act of human sympathy is expressed there and again here we have it on the part of the fruit vendor. So, uh, um, and it, uh, his, um, you know, uh, gesture does have the desired impact and the monkey climbs down to a lower branch and it is almost on a branch that is contiguous that is parallel to the stretched right arm of the fruit vendor and as the crowd um, waits with bated breath the impossible does happen and the monkey accepts the uh, bargain. So, uh, this moment is very interesting uh, in the story because um, of the fact that the fruit vendor, vendor gently gets the monkey to behave in a particular way when the threats and challenges and the curses of this trader, this rich um, upper class trader does not have the uh, necessary impact, the desired impact on the monkey that is there, that was there on the neem tree. So, uh, the onlookers congratulate um, the comment and, and, and make uh, uh, the positive uh, noises and um, while this is happening uh, the said G uh, what he does is he rudely stretched out his hands towards the fruit vendor um, asking him to give his cap back and um, uh, it is a very uh, interesting moment and the narrator says that his eyes were withdrawn as he had obviously felt uh, very embarrassed um, at being made by a cruel fate uh, the victim of what now seemed like the perverted sense of humor of the monkey. So, uh, again we get a, a, a little bit of physical description um, about the uh, set uh, and this is um, the relevant um, set of words. His eyes were withdrawn, um, his eyes um, you know uh, they did not have that forthright look, they, they somehow looked embarrassed um, and he had obviously felt um, very humiliated uh, at the hands of uh, a cruel fate and he thinks that it is it's a bad fate and um, he is a victim of what now seemed like a perverted sense of humor. So, the monkey's behavior is um, understood as a kind of a distorted perverted uh, sense of humor. So, um, the idea of fate is interesting uh, because he does not uh, bring in the idea of justice there uh, because he does not realize that he has been in the wrong uh, in, in, in relation to the coolie whom he has been harassing verbally um, and physically too for the amount of work that he makes him do. Um, we should realize that he does not carry a single thing. Um, all his his luggage has been um, you know uh, carried on the person of the coolie. So, uh, he thinks that it is just cruel fate that makes um, that made him um, and the victim of a mockery at the hands of a monkey and, and uh, however we know that as, as readers of this particular narrative we know that with the context of um, the the, uh, the kind of the motif of uh, General Hanuman and his uh, monkey troops uh, who have this instinctive ability to spot out a demon uh, with which they uh, play or uh, amuse themselves with or even fight. So, in that context we know that um, you know this particular character has been served what is due to him. So, uh, while uh, he thinks that it is unnecessary embarrassment and a perverted sense of humor, uh, we need to as I uh, mentioned just a second ago, we need to ask this question uh, uh, which is uh, is he a victim or the perpetrated of a, of a crime and, and uh, that crime as I mentioned is in the context of the coolie whom he has been abusing, but um, this crime itself could be a, a symbol 
of all the crimes of exploitation that uh, men like the Seth, uh, um, you know, uh, inflict on the members of the, the cl working classes in the Indian society. So, uh, it is a very symbolic uh, crime and for that symbolic crime, um, uh, he has been uh, punished by the monkeys punished by the monkeys through an act of embarrassment or humiliation. So, uh, let us look at the reaction of the fruit vendor which is very very uh, uh, significant uh, in on several levels. Um, so, he says that um, those badmashes are hungry so they disturb the passengers he really wanted the Banana. So, we have three simple statements there uh, which is what uh, the fruit vendor utters um, the moment the cap is returned to the set. Those badmashes are hungry meaning those monkeys and he calls the monkeys scoundrels and it is almost done in an affectionate manner. So, they disturb the passengers since they are hungry they disturb the passengers and uh, once that food is met with uh, the food being the bananas once that hunger is satiated satisfied um, they, they just uh, return the things or stop disturbing the passengers that seems to be the implication of that particular statement. So, uh, what strikes the reader the very careful reader is that this is a common usual behavior of the monkeys. So, this is not something that is a one off uncommon freak accident that has happened to the set. In fact, these monkeys have been performing such uh, disturbing uh, um, activities in order to get something from the person whom they are uh, um, victimizing or harassing or disturbing. So, this puts a very very interesting spin on the actions of the monkeys and I would suggest that this is um, uh, a level of interpretation that is connected to the uh, realistic the socio realistic uh, uh, aspect of this famished landscape of Uttar Pradesh. So, Again, um, another uh, uh, layer of interpretation could connect this, um, you know, realistic aspect to the mythical, epical, religious plane, where one could argue that these monkeys, even though they are hungry, they pick their victims, they choose their victims to play with only um, those who are evil minded in some way or the other become the victims of their amusement or mockery or um, uh, angry behavior. So, this, this, this uh, set of statements is very very interesting in the story. So, uh, what does the set do? Um, he tries to initially leave without paying him and um, the vendor's demand is that he wants two annas and um, for, for uh, the, the bananas that he offered the monkey uh, and the set reacts by saying what impudence uh, you know uh, what uh, uh, how dare he ask for two annas for what and um, the narrator once again when he witnesses this um, set of um, a conversation happening between the set and the fruit vendor he intervenes again and says um, uh, you know uh, you know give give them some more and um, this in, in interceding and this intervention is again uh, happening in the context of the coolie because again uh, the coolie also wants more money uh, for uh, his service that he rendered to the uh, tradesman again so we, we see a, a lot of parallels there a lot of overlapping and the general theme is that the set is too stingy 
too stingy. He doesn't part with uh, uh, the money that is due to the people who have served him, and that is made clear by these, um, you know, by these relations that he has with the coolie and with the fruit vendor. And when the uh, when these people who have served him ask for money, he uh, interprets their demand as uh, shameless behavior, as some kind of um, you know unethical uh, attitude on the part of the people. So, uh, the two uh, uh, men, the coolie and the fruit vendor, help us establish, reinforce the self centered um, attitude, the really narrow minded attitude of this really wealthy upper class man who uh, does not want to return gratitude for the work the others have rendered him. Thank you for watching. I will continue in the next session.